What is up guys? Today we are talking about why I failed my Dell internship. And this one is even more embarrassing than the last one. So you wanna make sure that you um, watch my previous video on, on why I failed my Google internship because a lot of that will come back to, uh, a lot of that context is important for this story as well. So without further ado, um, so the path towards Dell. I remember before I even got into Google, right? My teacher told me, I said I didn't even feel like I was worthy of even applying to Google, right? And he was trying to convince me. He said, even if I do bad at Google, I can always, let me just check something real quick. Okay, we're looking good. I can always, uh, oh yeah, if I do bad at Google, I can always go to Microsoft or something. And that was the case, like, when I was getting a lot of interviews, uh, I was getting a lot of interviews after Google. Uh, wasn't hitting, wasn't getting a lot of hits, like, yeah, technical interviews are insane. Um, but then I got an internship, I mean, not an internship, I got a call from Dell, we had a few calls, they had a scholarship program, and it seemed like a good fit, and it was. Um, going to Dell, like, what was it like working at Dell? Um, so Austin, Texas is really hot. <laughs> I think it's a lot different, but it's kind of similar culture from Tennessee. Um, what else? There, uh, there was no free food, right? I think everybody makes fun of me because I always talk about the food, right? Coming from Google, they had free food. Going to Dell, you have to pay for everything. So I'm like, I'm grabbing stuff and I'm just walking out and I re they're like, yo, you got to pay for that. I was like, oh, my bad. Like, I, I'm not trying to steal it. Um, what project was I working on? Um, let me think, okay, I remember. Yeah, so when I was with Dell, our internship was about making, um, we wanted to make an app so that we had all these different calls and we wanted to route them to the right specialist. So if there was an Alienware call, that we could take that information, bring them to the Alienware specialist. And if there was, let's say a, uh, a monitor issue, like we would give that to monitoring specialist because a lot of time was wasted with people getting filters to the incorrect cues. And so my job for that was using natural language processing in order to extract the keywords from their audio in order to filter them to the correct cues. And yeah, I was working in Python and I was evaluating different natural language processing libraries like Google, uh, Azure, AWS. And yeah, it was it was pretty cool, like the final product. Uh, I think I had some master students. I, I, I was just a like, junior at the time. I had some other master students come in and like, uh, and do some of the dashboarding and other natural language processing things. So that was cool. And what was it like? What was the black experience, right? Like when I was at Dell, they had all the black people on the outskirts of the town. Like we had to travel like 25 minutes away, but it was kind of cool just being able to speak with other black people in tech. Um, some of those friends went on to go to Apple and some of them didn't do any more tech. So uh, yeah. What it was. Funny story. Uh, I remember. What is it? My roommate cooked something that uh, that made me hungry and mad. So yeah, just like being an intern, those uh, those different things. So overall, my project was successful. My final presentation was great. People loved me. So why did I fail my um, Dell internship, in my opinion? Well, coming from Google, I didn't really like working for Dell compared to Google, of course, because, yeah, the energy just seemed like, uh, it, it, was, it, it was a hardware-focused company. And I love software, right? I'm a programmer. And I just, I just wanted to go to a company more focused on programming. Um, so yeah, like when I was there, I wasn't really, and on top of that, guys, I was studying my ass off. Like it was bad. Like I remember being in my room 
all night reading crack in the coding interview i wanted to get i wanted to kill my inter, uh interview with google right and so i remember like tears streaming down my face because it's like i'm not taking care of myself my friends are going out to party and i'm just standing here and i'm writing code i'm doing my thing and yeah um so i did not uh and i did all of that work and when i got back my senior year google would not even interview me so i i was i was studying my ass off i i, I for grew for growth what is it i didn't do anything fun or well not that's not completely true i didn't go out over the weekend and because of that uh and i didn't even get a chance so it's funny and then on top of that one of my dell into uh, one of the dell interns that i was working with while i was out here working hard right or like i didn't have a job for a year um he went to twitch and when I got to Twitch, he'd been there for four years and he became a senior software engineer. I spent a, like a year kind of lost, uh, like waiting on my mom. Like, so when I got out of college, I had pursued getting my degree as well as trying to, I mean like getting a master's degree. I was looking at master's program as well as getting a job and doing both those things at the same time, I failed at both at the same time. I should have focused on one. That's a mistake on my part. And so the point I'm trying to say is like when this dude, he was in there for four years and he became a senior software engineer. I was in there for, um, it took me, let's say four years to get there, right? One year hanging out with my mom and dad, like looking for a job. I was a contractor in the industry, which sucked. And I, I'll probably be making another video about that. And then I was at Cornell, which was lit, but it made me 90K in debt. <laughs> and then I was at MT. And that's, it's not, it's not, it's about four or five years, it sounds like. So yeah, it's like, let's say five years um, in all that time. And he got in there, I think he was a year under me. So he got in there for four years and became a senior software engineer. So he went from making like 200K allegedly to like 350 um while i uh what is it got in all this debt 90k over the day <laughs> or I'll, I'll say those numbers roughly so don't sue me if twitch is watching um but yeah so in conclusion be we have this term in computer or programming they call them code monkeys people who only want to write code and because i was so bad at building relationships and making bigger picture decisions i lost out on a chance to work with dell which is so after i got my master's degree from cornell i worked at this bank called mt and dell is a better company overall the MT, a more software focused company and like when i graduated it was coronavirus so like maybe some part of that was just bad timing but yeah because i was so arrogant and feeling like if i just worked hard i was going to get into google i, I missed out on a high paying job and um yeah i took the i took a long i took success I took the, my first job out of college, I was making 50K. So it's like, I was making half of what I'm really worth. And yeah, man, it's just, um, to be honest, like I could come in here and I can talk about white privilege. And I know a lot of y'all would eat that up at the same time. And I'm not trying to refute companies sometimes do um, racist things. But in my case, there was so much more I could have done to be successful. Um, and I, I think the reason that I'm here and I'm in front of you guys is that I wanna just talk to you about focusing on what we, um, 
what we can do, even if you're black, white, or Asian or whatever. It's like so many times we get really messed up circumstances and we make mistakes and I, I don't have any control over uh, the people at Dell. Like I, I remember when I when I didn't get that internship, I mean, didn't get an interview with Google, I was like, maybe I should go back and talk to Dell. And I did and nobody was there to listen to me. And I should have made, uh, I should have made more use of those resources while I was there. And um, yeah, I think the reason why I have no excuses, another reason why I, I talk like this is because it's like when my granddad, uh, my granddad got his degree when they were castrating black men for seeking their education. And so what does it look like for me to complain that uh, these guys didn't make it, um, didn't give me a very easy path, right? That I've had to work much harder than my counterparts. That may be true, but there's still a lot of opportunity and there's still a lot of things that I could have do, could have done better. And I hope you guys are learning from my arrogance in these areas um, and really appreciating how important in business it is to, 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 to establish good relationships. Like the guy that I was with at Twitch, he was not coding on the weekends like me, right? He was extremely charismatic. Everybody loved him. He was an excellent presenter. Just overall, this dude was a great leader. And because of that, like he got pushed up the ladder extremely fast. And um, where on me, like I, 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 I was a really good coder, but not a, I had, deficiencies in my in my um team chemistry that well let's just say i didn't make the most out of that opportunity and so yeah let me know in the comment section if you are enjoying this style of content about my background let me know if you think what i this, my opinions my hot takes on race is a bunch of bullshit like some of you have been doing <laughs> But thank you guys so much for listening, and I'll see you in the next one.